Also breaking tonight, new information on what the evacuation of the U.S. Embassy in Yemen means for the United States. Amid fears that this is a major setback in the hunt to destroy al-Qaeda's most dangerous affiliate. Charles Krauthammer watched my interview with Ms. Saki. He's a syndicated columnist, a Fox News contributor, and author of the New York Times bestseller, Things That Matter, with over one million copies sold. Here is our exchange. Charles, thank you for being here. So Yemen, Pleasure. the bottom line, is collapsing right now. And even Ban Ki-moon of the UN has confirmed that. And it also happens to host our most dangerous enemy, uh, al-Qaeda, uh, uh, faction of al-Qaeda. And yet, you know, Jen Psaki says, you know, we all had to go. We weren't, we weren't the only country, and, you know, it's too bad, but it's really not our fault. When you're reduced to saying that the Germans had to close their embassy, you know how far we've fallen. Germany isn't exactly a power in the Middle East anymore. It was in the 30s, but not now. Look, uh, I used to say that Jay Carney was underpaid. Well, Jen is vastly underpaid. That was a very, when you're dealt the hand she is and you try to defend it, uh, you've got a tough job. Look, on the tactical level, just sort of explaining, looking at the evacuation, it's really, it's humiliating. And this is after Benghazi. It isn't as if we didn't know what was going to happen. The Houthis took effective control of Sana'a, the capital, a few weeks ago. A week ago, they announced they were going to take over the government. This is not sudden. It isn't as if it happened overnight. Mm -hmm. And yet, with all the planning, they had to leave with the keys in the cars running. The Marines humiliatingly had to remove their weapons and leave them behind. And you asked, why was there no military transport? There was no answer to that. I assume it's because the Houthi government, or the junta, you might say, uh, could not guarantee the safety, or might even have said, we're going to shoot you down. Yeah, maybe the people you know, with the death to America signs didn't really want to help us out too much. Well, maybe when people hold those signs and they do the chanting, they actually mean it. The, the problem is, it's not just Yemen. I mean, Yemen is a major problem because of al-Qaeda's faction there. But as I pointed out with Jen, it appears that President Obama's Middle Eastern policy is in tatters. I mean, the embassy in Yemen, the embassy in Syria, the embassy in Libya, the, the hopes and dreams uh, behind the Arab Spring have not materialized. And as we've gotten behind the removal of these autocratic leaders, what has replaced them has been anything but favorable to the United States. Look, this is a policy in complete collapse. In the 1970, Henry Kissinger managed to maneuver the Soviets out of the Middle East. They were allied with Egypt. We broke that alliance, became an ally of the U.S. We were the hegemon. We were the dominant power in the region for four decades. And in these six years of Obama, that has evaporated. And the reason is not difficult to understand. Obama said at the beginning of the presidency, I'm here to end wars. And even yesterday, in announcing the uh, authorization for the use of force against ISIS, said, we do not, we're not in interested in endless wars. He has announced to the world again and again, we're getting out. Mm -hmm. Even when he announced the uh, escalation, uh, the surge in Afghanistan, the sentence after announcing the surge, he says, we're getting out on the certain date. The world knows from Afghanistan to the Libyan desert that Obama does not want to be involved. So what happens? These places are unstable in civil wars. You are either going to join the pro-American side, the pro-democratic side, the pro-Western side, or you're going to join the radical Islamist. And let's say you're a neutral, a peasant. Which way are you going to go? You know the U.S. is leaving. You know the U.S. is not going to be around. You know the U.S. is, is, is creating a vacuum in the region. And when the Americans are gone, which under Obama you know is going to be soon, the other guys are going to come and they're going to kill you, slit the throats of your family, and take away your women. When you're a peasant, you have to make that choice. The choice is easy. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you before I let you go, the, the one strongest ally we have in this region is Israel. Obviously, Jordan is another one, but Israel is the strongest uh, allied to the United States and the strongest militarily. And yet, with respect to that ally, it seems to be acrimony and confrontation and poking the bear and uh, affronts to Benjamin Netanyahu. Why? Well, 
what do you think I am, a psychiatrist? <laughs> I can't quite work that one out. But I will point out that Barack Obama has forsworn regime change in the region. Remember when we had the Iranian Revolution under Obama's watch in 2009, where there was a chance to get rid of the most anti-American regime in the region? He didn't lift a finger even rhetorically. No regime change. He said that's Bush stuff. That, that is not what we said, except in one place. The one place he actively trying to change the regime is in Israel. He's doing everything he can to, to out to maneuver, to humiliate, to insult, to give the back of the hand to, to uh, Bibi Netanyahu, knowing that for any Israeli prime minister, jeopardizing the U.S.-Israeli relationship could be fatal at the polls, and that's exactly what Obama is doing. Mm. Charles, great to see you. Thanks for being here tonight. Sure, it's a pleasure. A new bombshell from the IRS. Illegal immigrants who never paid taxes could soon be getting tax refunds, thanks to President Obama. And wait until you hear what else we learned today. A stunning report is next.